Hey guys, this is Lisha from Scarlet Moon Creations and today's video is going to be something a little bit different. These are my favorites. Anyway, this is going to be the start of a series of videos where I talk about my favorite genres, why they are my favorites, and the books that top the list for those genres. We're gonna start out with urban fantasy. I think currently, um, or at least by the end of 2019, urban fantasy is my favorite reading genre. One of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this, my favorite books, is to like establish a baseline and then build from there. I want to see how my taste changed over the years and also um, add and subtract to them based on whatever. Uh, fantasy in general is probably overall my favorite but I'm gonna break that down. Um, I thought about splitting this into just like high fantasy or epic fantasy and then a list for low fantasy, but my low fantasy list would basically mostly be urban fantasy. So I just said let's just go with urban fantasy and continue from there. Is the reason why I enjoy urban fantasy is I do like seeing magic in an urban setting. Ur urban fantasy is what led me to going down the road to becoming a witch, a modern day pagan, which specifically I am a Wiccan, if you were not aware of that. Um, now you are. And I also particularly uh, uh, I particularly enjoy urban fantasy because it has a higher amount of romance in the books than regular fantasy does I enjoy romance I enjoy well done romance I also enjoy all the other things that fantasy can bring I feel like fantasy is my ultimate genre because it has so many other genres within it and I love that and let's get into my top 10 favorite urban fantasy books so the first one the first one the one that really really got me um, the Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. This is the book one, Interview with a Vampire, and as you can see, it is well loved and well read. Anyway, um, one day, young Lucette uh, was toddling around, young teenage Lucette was toddling around, desperate for something to read, and my mom had this on her cell, so I was like, let's see what the hype is for vampires and I fell in love with this. I love Louis, I love Lestat. This is the book, this is the book and the series that made modern vampires uh, not really horror, more they, they started down the road to being love interest, though love is not the priority here um, at all. Uh, but now, you know, we get backstories for vampires and how, you know, they came to be and they have emotions and feelings and, you know, they're just trying to eat and survive like the rest of us. And there's definitely talk about religion, which shouldn't surprise you because Anne Rice at this point. But, um... God, number one, because it was the first and it's still golden for me. Let me be gentle with that. Uh, next up, another well-loved, this is my favorite series of all time. Currently, 
nothing has beaten it because nothing it's still ongoing um and this is the first book in Laurel K. Hamilton's Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series. Another well-loved, well-read book. I came across this in the library and I actually didn't... I saw Burnt Offerings. It sounded interesting. I picked it up. I loved it. And then I went back and read all the books that she had out. And then when I went to college and I had like a job and money... I bought them all. So this is not even the first version of this book that I've read, but this is how much I've read it. I've re reread this series God knows how many times. Um, I know it's, at this point, a very divisive series. Um, we follow Anita Blake, who I started out being younger then and then now older um, then. Uh, Anita Blake is a vampire hunter, but she's also a necromancer. That is an innate ability that she has while being a vampire hunter is a job that she is good at physically. And she goes through a lot of changes. I just really identified with Anita um, at first, and then I think over time... I just be came to respect her as a person. I like the changes that she's gone through. Um, this definitely started out as, um, or at least was, was pushed as paranormal romance. And it's definitely one of the foundational books in both urban fantasy and paranormal romance. There's vampires, there's werewolves, there's were-rats, there are were-tigers, um... There are zombies because necromancy. There's a lot of politics, which is one of the things I really like. Um, how Anita gives us updates on what's going on in the world. And this world takes place in modern day St. Louis for the most part. Um, though Anita travels sometimes. And like there are politics to her job, who she works with. Um, the police departments, uh, the government um, oversight. In this world, vampires and were animals are out. Um, witches and, and necromancers and wizards, these are all people with real powers that really affects the world and everyone is aware that they exist, as do the Fae and several other like paranormal things and time it was a struggle to figure out if I should put interview with um the vampire chronicles above this but next up hmm this is this is one that I wasn't sure if I should put um here because I don't know how I feel about this series anymore but let's say 10 years ago and I know you're like oh it was 10 years but um for a good while, I was not really reading much of anything at all, except for these two series. The, this one and Cheryl and Kenyon's uh, Dark Hunter series. And I love these books so much. So this, this, this first book is deceptive as hell these this can be read as a standalone and uh paranormal romance and you'd be good but the the ending or maybe not even just the ending but like there are uh what do, what do they call them uh, sprinkles of things that pop up in later books um, and lots that's in this it, it matters to the overall series basically dark hunters are warriors from the past who were who died wrongfully in some way shape or form and the goddess Artemis approaches them and offers them the chance to basically live forever if they will be one of her dark hunters who 
are kind of like vampires, but not really. They only go out at night, um, and they have the fangs or whatever, but they don't need to drink blood. Uh, it's really hard to talk about these things without giving stuff away. Um, and they hunt a immortal race of beings that was brought into the world by her brother, Apollo. Uh, and it's... It's crazy. I love the mythology in this. Absolutely very heavy on the mythology. Um, I love most of the guys. And there are women dark hunters as well. Um, they span across various... Um, not pantheons, but though the gods do. Uh, various cultures and uh, locations. Though we start out very Greek and Roman heavy in the beginning of the series. And like I said, this sounds, this first book is very much paranormal romance heavy, but it's like an intro into the world and then things explode from there because there are dream hunters, there are were hunters, there's all kinds of shit going on with the gods and goddesses. Artemis is, wow. Uh, the next book is by an author who has passed away, which I only recently found out. So, thankfully, this series is complete. And it is the... Vampire Huntress <laughs> Legend series. This is something that is still unique for me. We have a woman of color who is the main character. She is the vampire huntress. The entire series is mostly focused on people of color and this is still unique. This came out and I've got a first edition here. Um, we follow Damali Richards who is uh, working at the Warrior of Light Records and she is, you know, kind of like the chosen one, kind of like Buffy, yes, um, to give a good description. Vampires are not good guys here, but they're not all bad either. Uh, this, this has some, this series has some biblical, uh, references and also, uh, some non-biblical ref um uh, religious references as well um there are there's a lot of ties to uh sankofa the symbol and what it symbolizes as well as some uh west african uh native uh spirituality practices as well and I think it's really well done. This could be also considered an urban fiction. So urban fiction, different from urban fantasy, tends to be like con black contemporary fiction. So like um, not necessarily having a fantastical element, but it's, you know, black contemporary, but a specific subset. Like, like yeah. So, you know... There tends to be a lot of drugs, a lot of violence, gang violence, um, stuff like that. And that is in this series as well. So if you like either or, do pick this up. I don't remember how many books in this. Let's say, I think, oh, I think it's 13. 13 books. Um, this is book number one. And I love this series. Uh, I'm overdue for a reread. I just know I own all the books and they are great. Next, urban fantasy favorite. You should not be surprised. Jim Butcher's Dresden Files. Woo, this is still ongoing. Like two out of the three others. I'm not counting the Vampire Chronicles is ongoing since she just likes to put out whatever she wants when she wants. Which is okay, I guess. <sighs> the Dresden Files, we follow Harry Dresden, who lives in Chicago, who is a wizard. 
and that's what he does for a living. He is a wizard detective, and he ain't making that much money because of things. But this starts out really kind of slow, and it builds up to something amazing, and it's still ongoing. I'm sure it reminds me of uh, Peter Parker, but he's older and still poor. So, I mean, if you've read and continue to read the Spider-Man comics, you see in what direction I'm at sometimes a very uh, resigned and downtrodden Peter Parker becomes when he gets older in some uh, timelines, I guess. And Harry is very much similar. He's also got that sarcastic joke his way through his emotions and life type of personality. So, pick it up. Well loved. Not as beaten up because I didn't this, didn't read this as long ago as some of the others. Here, next. This This series is the Women of the Other World series by Kelly Armstrong. Now, Kelly has a bigger world where it's just, like, other world, and I think, um, there are, you know, offshoots of other world, and Women of the Other World is one of them. And this one came first, actually, which is fine. This series in particular follows, uh, for the first several books, Elena, who is bitten without her permission by a werewolf, and she becomes a werewolf, and it's all really weird. Um, Elena's from Canada, she's got a boyfriend, and then this dude that she's been kind of eyeing, uh, turns out to be a werewolf, and he bites her, and we go from there. Elena has to move into the U.S., upstate New York, and learn how to be a werewolf in a world where there are no other female werewolves. She is the one and only. I love this series. Um, like, I feel like it's really realistic for if you were just randomly bitten by a wolf and then it turns out that wolf is a werewolf and that werewolf turns out to be this guy who you thought was hot. But, kind of odd. Um, I don't want to give away too much of the plot so that there's reasons for things. And, um... I love uh, the love interest. Clayton is a really interesting guy. He reminds me a lot, a lot of Wolverine. Um, so if you like, know and like X-Men, then maybe you want to pick this up. The evolution of their relationship of Elena as a werewolf is really interesting. Now, this is women, not woman. So, later books follow other women of the underworld, and we see glimpses of them in the first, not this one, the very first book, but in the first books of the series. And you get to find them interesting, so following them becomes a thing that I liked. Um, but still, I think the first four or five books follow Elena specifically, and if for nothing else, this will always be one of my favorite urban fantasies. Like, how do you be a werewolf in the city? And then Elena's a female, so she's got some things to deal with that the guys don't. Um, and she wasn't raised or born a werewolf, so... There's those issues as well. Um, modern independent woman, how dare you. Anyway, next up, I've talked about this series before. The Patricia Briggs, uh, Mercy Thompson. I'm going to say the universe. There are two series within this universe. Strictly Mercy Thompson series. And then there is uh, the Alpha and the Omega series. Which is an offshoot following uh, tertiary characters from the Mercy, uh, Mercy Thompson series. But both are great. Mer um, 
Mercy Thompson is a shifter. Not a werewolf, not a were animal, but a shifter. She is uh, half Native American and gosh, it's really hard not to give spoilers for these things. She's half Native American and she turns, she shifts into a coyote and she's a mechanic. So Mercy is going about her very odd but normal life and then shit starts hitting the fan around her and she's kind of a do-gooder so she tries to help out where she can um and becomes more important in the world at large in the politics of the paranormal society because there are werewolves there are fae there are vampires and um Mm -hmm. There may or may not be other shifters. As far as she knows, though, she's the only coyote shifter. Um, And that means she's got some gifts that none of these others have. And they don't know exactly what to do with Mercy, though Mercy just wants to work in her shop and be left alone. So, I just like Mercy's character. I do enjoy the romances the romances. The romance in this series and um, in the Alpha Omega series, which the romance is more uh, of, a, of a big deal because we're following a relationship. Um, in this, we're following Mercy and all of her things and sometimes we focus on her romance. But yeah, um, world. this is another series where human beings are aware of other paranormal or of, of paranormal species and um we get to see some of the politics of that play out um so next we're getting into more recent series um the others not to be confused with the women of the other world The Others by Anne Bishop. This is another of my favorite authors for a completely different series, which I will talk about in another video. But um, she did that series and then she was like, okay, I'm done. And now, and then this came out and I've read other books from her. I was just like, okay. She's like, it's an urban fantasy. And I'm like, oh, that's a first. Everything else has been fantasy fantasy like high fantasy epic fantasy um not this uh this is really unique and still really good um even though it's a bit of a genre shift we've got uh, meg who is a cassandra sang in that she can basically see the future when she spills her blood Um, She's in the real world not knowing what the hell the real world is. So this one, this series is a little bit different because the world is not quite the modern one that we're in. Um, um, The majority of the world, like I said, is natural and the others live there. Humans live in small towns, cities, and... uh, villages in in some cases so cassandra is a human but not quite the type of regular type of human that the others are used to dealing with she escapes to this town and finds and others they have these places where they the others who want to experience human life like can control so it's like a border area between a town and a city and then the other's natural world and um she escapes to there and then everything blows up so uh it's like why is she wanted by the government um the others are trying to figure out what's going on at and it's it's all very interesting. I like the thought process for the others. Um, they don't think like human beings. They don't have morals and standards and things that human beings have. 
and I like that. It's the conversations between them and then Meg are interesting because she didn't grow up like a human anyway, so she had like no interaction with any other humans really. Uh, so she don't have that either. So it's really it's very speculative. Um, the yeah, so not typical. Very interesting. Continuing the not typical, um, this series I had to be reminded of, um, the Weather Wardens series by Rachel Kane. This is so left field. Basically, we follow Joanna Bald Baldwin, who is a weather warden. A weather warden is someone who can control the elements and therefore the weather um there is a warden association you basically go to school and figure out how to control your powers and all of that stuff and joanna is not like the others of course not um and uh joanna tries to get ahead in in non-typical ways and that doesn't work for her so she tries to connect with the most powerful warden and then she starts finding things about the warden council um about the warden association about how whether wardens get their powers how they become more powerful and things just oh it becomes very world ending almost <laughs> towards the end of the series and it's just like wow dang I like this series it's super unique I've never read or heard of anything like it last but not least is my sort of historical urban fantasy feel free to kick me off the urban fantasy island if you don't think this fits I don't care <clears throat> we have the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. Well read. Chunky Monkeys. Outlander is k kind of historical fantasy. Um, I say it's urban because the settings are urban, especially the longer you go into the series as more and more towns are built up. So we have Claire Randall who accidentally... Um, goes through the sta uh, Scottish Standing Stone Circle and winds up being transported to the past, um, 18th century Scotland in the middle of the first, like, Scottish independence, um, the, the, the fight at Culloden, if anyone knows it. The series has been made into a TV show on stars. I've only watched the first couple of seasons, which were pretty true to the show, but I hear that it doesn't stay that way. I just, you just love Claire and Jamie. You follow when they're together and when they're apart. Things are super interesting, and it's not the modern world, but it's our world, so I included it. It's one of my favorites, and if you have the time. You should read it because it's really well written. I think this is, um, I know this is, um, historical fantasy. It's probably one of the most popular, um, and there's a lot of ups and downs and, um, especially if you like historical things, like for the history of it, like, you know, Scottish independence, um, the starting of the new world, the United States, um, uh, we even get some, uh, French Revolution, uh, Versailles type thingies happening here. I'm so bad at remembering names and dates, but I, like, know what happened during those times, if you tell me. So, yeah, I like it, and I like their relationship and how it evolves over time. Um, so do give this a shot. So those are my top ten urban fantasies. Yes, I'm counting Outlander as urban fantasy. Let me know if you've read any of these. 
if you like them, I hope this gives you a good idea of what I like in urban fantasies. If you got some recommendations based on the ones I've talked about, let me know. I've <clears throat> I haven't really started reading any new urban fantasies because two or three of these are still ongoing. Like, at least three of them are still ongoing and they're long. So uh, but I wouldn't mind starting some new ones. I definitely want to get this video up before starting new urban fantasies that I've heard about since I've joined YouTube. Um, and please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when the next bookish video comes up. Um, I will continue this. My favorite series, the next video, will most likely be my favorite high fantasy books. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!